Hey, beloved. Today, I'm going to talk to you about your calling from God. This was a requested video or to talk more about your calling and how to live it out. So today, I'm going to talk about what it is and how to walk it out through the different seasons of life. But before I do that, I'd like to remind you that you are so loved by God. That's why I always say, beloved, you're loved by him, you're accepted in the beloved, and you are beautiful in the eyes of your heavenly father. So I just want you to, I just want to remind you of that and now I'm going to dig in but I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that and to give this video a thumbs up and to share it with someone who needs to know what their calling is. You can watch it first and if you think this is for someone that someone you know could uh, benefit from this message please share it in your community. Okay so what is your calling? Ephesians 118 says that you may know what is the hope of his calling what is the hope uh, the hope that reminds me of jeremiah 29 11 that says i know the plans that i have for you plans to give you a hope and a future not to harm you but to bring you to an expected end the hope of God is his expectation for you the hope that we have in Christ and so there's a hope of your calling God has an expectation and an intention for you when he called you that is the purpose that he created you for and called you for first Peter 2 9 says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy Holy nation, his own special people, that you may you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. When most people think of their calling, they think of the works that God called them to do. But the word calling means to invite, to bid forth, to call by your surname and by your or by your father's name. Surname and father's name is the same thing. Your last name, the name of your father. And that's very interesting because we are known by the name of Christ when we are born again. Now, there is a word calling in the New Testament that talks about the vocation but when God calls you when you look at the word in the Greek when you hear the word calling for them there's only a few places where it's talking about the calling when it's specifically talking about the works but when he talks about how you come into Christ and the call of God on your life is not just works in the world your calling only relates to your vocation but in Christ your calling is more than the works that you do your calling from God is first and all a first of all an invitation from him to have a relationship with him John 17 3 says this is eternal life that you may know the one true God and Jesus Christ his son to know God, to have an intimate relationship, to be intimately acquainted with him, the relationship. He wants you to know him. He calls you into relationship. He calls you his beloved, Ephesians 1. He calls you his son and daughter, but I'll get more into that. Because second, he calls you to become his son or his daughter to become who he's called you to be. So it's, I like to say that it's a fourfold calling. So he calls you to become uh, a new creation in Christ, a son or our daughter. And then he gives you gifts and he calls you like he called Paul in Romans chapter one. Paul said, Paul called to be an apostle. So he gives you a gift for the body of Christ and for the edifying of the body for for the for the work of the ministry and that is part of your identity but your first uh, a daughter or a son of God a new creation in Christ Romans 9:26 says and it shall come to pass in the place where they said to them you are not my people, that they shall be called the sons of the living God. And so when you are born again, Romans says, I believe in chapter 8, that we cry out, Abba, Father. Our spirit bears witness with his spirit, with the Holy Spirit, that we are the children of God. He calls us into a new identity. He calls us by his name. That's that surname. 
and then to do the good works that he created us to do. Ephesians 2, 10, that you were created unto good works. So yes, there is a calling to works, but it's not to be the priority or the thing that you make your main focus. God has a re wants a relationship with you. That is why he called you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed him on him would not perish, would but have everlasting life. And we just talked about what everlasting life is. It is to know God and Jesus Christ. It is not just here in the by and by. Salvation is made so that you can know him, so he can take away the sin, take away the stain of sin and the sting of sin, so that even when you mess up, you have a, a advocate with the Father. You have a way back to the Father so that you can be in relationship with him, even though he's a holy God. It's it's all about relationship with him and out of that relationship comes your identity and you find out who he's called you to be um, as far as your gifts talents and abilities through spending time with him in relationship we can do all the spiritual gift tests and all those things that we want but it's in the presence of the lord and spending time with him and in fellowship with other believers the sons and daughters of god that it's made known to you that it's revealed to you that you grow in your gifts and so many times people put that before they get saved in this what am i called to do 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 but god wants you to spend time with him and whatever he calls you to do and whatever season that is it that that is that's what he wants from us and we've all missed it and gotten off and you know if you've been called to ministry and you um you hear this calling and you hear god has this but truly that's not it. He wants you to put the relationship with him first and then let him work it out all through the different seasons of life. And then let's not forget about this because as we're striving to do the works, um, we also, um, instead of our relationship and our identity being authentic, being secure, being confident in who God has called us to be, even though we may be different from other people, an authentic representation representation as of Christ as a son or daughter of God we also forget when we're striving to measure up to things we forget to that God has called us to live an abundant life that there's an abundant life in Christ that he promised us John 10 10 the enemy has come to steal kill and destroy but I came that you might have life and life more abundantly and there is supposed to be a season where you go into joy and you go into peace and you go into the rest the restoration the recovery the goodness the abundance that God has for you and so he calls you to that life to live fully to live in in abundance and joy and those are not just material things that is the goodness of God um, John prayed in John 3 that beloved above all else I pray that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers that means that your life prospers, you prosper in your business affairs, and your soul prospers, that you are well and that you are healthy. And so this is the calling from God and how you walk it out. As I said, I like to call it a fourfold calling. Maybe you could add more to it. Maybe you would break it down a different way. But I like to call it the primal life, the primal life, because God calls us for a purpose. He calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light for a purpose. And that purpose is for to have a relationship with him, to become who he's called us to be, to do the good works he's called us to do, and to live an abundant life. And so works, I use that word mission. So purpose, relationship, identity, mission. That's the good works he's called you to do. And abundant life. And so this is your calling. And the way that we live it out is to focus on our relationship with him first. And I just wanna read from my book really quickly. Um, a call to God's daughters. And it's based on the book of Ruth, but this particular chapter says, 
you are called your works are accepted because many times we want to do the works but there are seasons when you are your works or your calling uh, is to raise your family is to focus on your relationship with God and that's it or to um, focus on knowing who he's called you to be um, but then you may be just sitting there and thinking God what have you called me to do but when you put the focus back on your relationship with God and who he's called you to be, then whatever he has called you to do in each season, your, 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 your calling and your purpose doesn't change. But your assignment, the good works that you are called to do, can and will change season by season. So when you know that your calling is more than works, then you don't get upset when God calls you to do something different in a different season. If he calls you to um, raise a family and be a mom and a wife um, or a single mom, you know, whatever season he calls you to, if he calls you to do all these, to have a career or to, to, um, preach the gospel and start a ministry or he calls you to all these things in, in one season sometimes we're doing all the things and then sometimes he says i want you to do nothing or i just want you to do this one thing when you know that your calling is more than works and that your works or your assignment the good works everything that god calls you to do is a good work even if it's raising your children and that's it, or it's doing a good job and being a good, um, uh, having a career and being a witness for Christ on your job. If you're called into ministry, if you're called into business, if you're just called to be a wife, if you're called to preach the gospel, whatever you're called to do in whatever season, that is part of the good works that God has called, created you to do, called and created you to do. And so, beloved, I just want you to know that that how you how you how you live it out is to focus on your relationship with God and be willing to take the, the next assignment and to be satisfied and content in whatever season that you are in. And the way that you do that is to understand that every season has its own uh, beauty and blessings, its own purpose and lessons. Every season has a beginning and an ending. And so you will come through different seasons in life. You will go through hard seasons. You will go through seasons of blessing and and wonder and, and flourishing and sowing and reaping and all those different seasons because spiritual seasons are like the four seasons winter spring summer and fall and so they go round and round they're cyclic and they're linear they come and they come around in a cycle cyclical and then but you're constantly moving forward so we have winter spring summer and fall but it also moves us forward as we cycle through to um progress through years and that's how life is you progress in your calling you progress in your purpose and in your life but you go through these different seasons and that represent different things and when you go through a winter season let's start winter spring summer fall so winter season or let's start in spring so spring would be the season when you're sowing it might be a new beginning or when you're sowing you're doing something new you're doing the work and believing god for the thing that he's promised you and then um summer is the season when you're starting to see lots of fruit or at least um the first fruit of things coming up and you're saying God I you know you have faith because you're seeing the 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 fruit for which you have sown in your life and in your labor and so that is a different season that work that you did is starting to pay off the the amount of time you put into your relationship with God and to um, transforming, being transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can walk out who God has already called you to be. And then there is the fall is when there's a harvest and you're walking in that purpose. You're walking in the fullness of your identity in Christ. You're walking in the abundant life. You're, you're, you are 
you are living in the secret place and you are in, you know God and he knows you and you know how to tap into your relationship with him. And then you have seasons, um, winter, where it's quiet, where what you, where it's dark seasons, they're night seasons, and what you prayed about, um, uh, in one season, you don't see and you're having to live off the faith and the fuel and the food and the produce from your fall. And so that's how life is. And so sometimes, depending on what we're going through, those are spiritual seasons. But depending on what season we are in life, if we are, as we're progressing in age and maturing and being married and all the things that we do regardless of what spiritual season we're in we live out our calling through it all by focusing on our relationship with God first our identity in Christ and then holding loosely the works that he's called you to do, knowing that he calls you to do different things in different seasons, but you're constantly maturing in Christ and you're doing and you're being who he's called you to be. So you're showing up, going from glory to glory and faith to faith. And so I hope that this helps you understand your calling from God is more than the works that you do. But next time I'm gonna talk about what it means to be called into ministry or into the workplace. So we're, we're going to talk about relationship and how to cultivate that relationship with God and how important that is because everything that God calls you to do is dependent on his relationship with you, your relationship with him and how he guides you. So it's so important to cultivate a relationship with God. That's where he reveals things to you. We're going to talk about identity and we're going to talk about being called into ministry. And we're also going to talk about how to cultivate cultivate an abundant life in Christ. Sometimes we forget that. It's simply enjoying life. You know, and sometimes we're striving to get to a place where we can finally enjoy something. And we are meant to enjoy the season that we're in, to look for the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons as we go through these different seasons in life. Enjoy the season, whether you are called to do a hard thing in a hard season or whether God or, or whether you're in a, a fall season where you are seeing the fruit of all that and enjoying the blessing and getting to eat the fruit thereof. God wants you to learn to capture, to first be able to see and then um, capture, experience the beauty and the blessings and the purpose and the lessons that he has for you. You just have to learn to ask the right questions. And so if you um, want more clarity about the season that you are in, identifying your season and um, understanding how to experience and discover the beauty, blessings, purpose, and lessons in whatever season of your calling that you are in, you can download my free guide, Five Clarifying Questions for Every Season of Life. I hope this has blessed you, and I hope that you will subscribe and stay tuned for the next video coming up next Thursday on this same topic.